Right, thank you for joining me again. Uh, if it's your first time, thank you for joining me. Got to turn a little birdhouse today, a little ho hollowed out birdhouse. Um, just using a, this is just a piece of leftover tantalized wood. If you've watched any of my other videos, I've mentioned it. I've got loads of this stuff. Um, I've just built a pagoda in the garden, as I've said, and I've got all these offcuts. Perfect for practicing with all these bits of wood. Lovely to practice with. So if you can get hold of any, I mean, it's nice to use your exotic woods and your stuff. But I mean, a little piece of wood like this. This is a bit of sweet chestnut. I'm going to do a little, like a little bowl. Something like that costs you uh, anything, three, four, five pound for something like that. If you're buying them off of eBay, it could work out to cost you, but with postage, about eight quid. You don't really want to practice with that and, and mess it up. Save those for your nice bits. You, you can do all your, your practicing on these soft softwoods. They're perfect. And if you can get a good finish off the tool on this sort of wood, you'll get a good finish on any wood. I'm going to be using carbide tools because that's what I'm demonstrating. I'm going to be using the standard type three set, the detail, the round, the square. I'm going to be using my carbide parting tool. They're the tools I'm going to be using today. Okay, that's it, nothing else. I'm going to, obviously I'm going to be using chucks, I'm going to be using drill bits. So I'm going to bring you around, uh, get you focused in on this so you can see what I'm actually doing. So just bear with me a second and let me get you... All right, don't make anyone sick by moving it. Right, hopefully I can get you in focus here so you can see all me, all me cuts. Right, about there I think I do. Right, I'll leave you at that. Now, I've all, as you can see, I've already drilled a hole in here, 28mm hole for the entrance. Now, I've got a few cracks in the end of this piece of wood here, so I'm going to have to part some of that off first. So, I'm probably going to go down to there. I want this section for my roof. And then I'll be putting a tenon on the bottom so I can get it in the chuck. I'll be doing that first. So that's going to give me this to play with as, as the birdhouse. I'll be hollowing that out. So first thing I'm going to do is get a tenon put on here. Get this into a chuck so it's nice and safe. Then I'm going to turn away some of that top. So I'll get down to a nice bit of wood with no cracks. Then I'll be hollowing the top out. So ready for when that turns around and mounts back on and then I'll be parting that off Fitting it on shaping the roof and you'll see as we go through and we'll get it done So we'll get started. We we'll get a tenon on this end first So most important thing I always say it face shield. Don't tell me about one, please Right, everything's all secure I've already roughed it down, did that before, drilled the hole. Right, we use a square carbide chisel, get the tenon put on this end. Nice and gentle, small cut. Remember, we're not in a rush, we're, we're, this is just a bit of fun turning. Got it on a step centre because this is a soft wood. It will spin if it catches. Now there's a very nasty knot on the end of this piece of wood, so I'm going to take a real gentle cut to stop it from biting. Right, that's gonna. Let's see. I'm looking at my jaw, should measure it, but I, I tend to do it by eye. This is a soft wood and I'm going to be hollowing it. I don't want too small a tenon. I think that's going to do me. Right, so I'm going to stop that. Yeah, right on the bottom of this piece of wood you can see there's a, there's a big knot there. And it, each time I come into it, it's, sort of, it's grabbing so that will spin. I mean, I can hold that and that spin, but that saved me getting a catch and that's using a step centre. As you can see, it spins, so just tighten it up. Now, just put that tenon on there. So now, I'm going to take this off and put a chuck on. Right, 
I like these. They unscrew, you can put all different heads in them. I don't like keep putting uh, drive centers in, into my headstock. I'd, I'd rather use these. I, I, I love these, they're brilliant. Not very expensive. Look on eBay for that. Get this mounted. Alright, I'm just going to gently tighten up, then I'm going to bring up my headstock, so a towel stock, sorry, get it right. Right, bring my towel stock up, that gives it a bit of support, and I know it's all in, and I'm going to tighten up nice and tight because I say this is a soft wood, so there are, that's nice and true. Right, tool rest as close as I can really get it. I'm going to turn this bit down first to see where I can stop stop with the cracks. Right. I'm not in no rush. Now you can use your tool just pushing straight in. I'm not going to be out using an angle at this point, but if you hold your tool down, you can come in for a peeling cut. Now, there, not doing nothing, just raise my handle slightly. There, it starts to crack. As I come in, I just gently raise the handle. It just gives you a nicer cut. I'm going to stop and have a look at that. Yeah, the cracking's gone from there, so I, I can I can take that as my my bit there. Yeah, when you come in, I like say you you can just push straight in with with the carbide tools. It's it's one of the appeals a lot of people have with them, but it's quite aggressive. It's, it, it grabs in pretty quick. You know, when you when you when you be, you're learning, easiest way is if you come in. So you get it on there before it starts cutting. So it's not cutting, and then if I just, by lifting the tool handle, it will start to cut. It starts it a lot gentler. It's, it's just a bit more gentler. You know, you don't, don't be aggressive all the time. And that way, not only that, you'll get a lovely clean, clean finish on your cut. It won't be rough. People just seem to think that carbide tools just will give you a rough cut all the time. It's not true. You can get just as good a finish as you can with traditionally. Remember, because I'm going to take this last little nib off, I've said in one of my other videos, you took roll the tool over slightly, come in, because I can come in up and touch there, then I can come up to the cut, then I can go in. Okay, that way, let's get this stop. See that way, because I've got, I mean, I've got a nasty knot in the top here as well. If I just come over and I hit against this side, right, there's a chance the whole of that cut has come into contact, it could grab on me and it give you a bit of a catch. If you roll it slightly and you come in, it, it won't be cutting, it can't grab. And then you can gently roll it back because you're in position. You're not going to get that surprising catch where you start. And then you can just come in and take that last little bit off. So there we are, we're nice and... Uh, Nice and clean finish there. Not that it matters that much because I'm going to be holding this anyway. So what I'm going to do is turn the tool rest around now. 
So I can actually, I'm not. First thing I'm going to do, is right, I'm going to use my chuck and I'm going to put a little hole through this centre. It's only going to be a small hole this one. And I will explain. Right, that drill bit is actually not going to be quite long enough, but we'll go with that. It's only a small drill bit. Loosen that off. It's gonna make a bit. That's why I break in. And this is why I break in. There you go. It's just make a note because it's not on there. It's not locked off. It's just vibrating a bit. It's nothing. No, nothing dangerous there. It's just a simple case of pushing in. Okay. Normally I would just uh, line it up by hand and go in by hand, and that'd be it. Right. I've got my hole in there. Let's stop that. Now I'm going to get my tool rest into place. Now I'm going to stop move back as far as I can. I haven't got as much room on, on this lathe. I normally, you probably know, I use my other. A bigger lathe over there, but I'm using a small one today. Right, so I'm going to come in now, my parting tool, because I want, what I want to do now is I want to make the little lip where it's going to go back over the top of this when it's done. Come in. I'm not going to go too thin on the edge because soft wood it's, it's going to break so I come in we go we another little cut and another little cut alright now I'm going to come with my round part and tool my round round carbide chisel getting all the words mixed up today must have been that rum I had last time a little bit of like a little bit of vibration. It's coming nice and gentle. Rolling my tool. Just rolling it. A little bit of noise. It's because I'm overhanging. I'm out quite away on the from the chuck. The wood's quite low. I am going into end grain. But keeping that chisel rolled over. Now the problem I've got here, I'm gonna to have to move this is I've got my towel so I've got my towel stock in the way, so I'm just gonna I know you can't see this, but I'm gonna unscrew and take my towel stock off. Take the stock out. Just take my towel stock off. There we go. Right, that gives that, that's better. Now I can get my chisel round. See how I can come round this side of it? Just to reduce the weight on the roof. I'm going to be having a 
tip through so it's going to come up to a slight point so I'm going to hollow out mainly up through the centre just to lighten it down really you get this noise so I say I'm going into end grain here new turners and this is what it's more aimed at for, for beginners when you're doing this picture on here picture what your roof's going to be because what you don't want to do is hollow this too close to the sides and then when you come to put your your roof you're going to go straight through it so when you're hollowing here that inside's got to reflect what you're going to do on the outside I want a, a lip here and this is the bit that's going to overhang on the outside so the actual is going to be inside here so now I'm mainly doing up inside Remember this is just a bit of practicing, that's all. We'll just do some practice cuts. And like I say, when you roll your tool over, just pull around with your tip. If you want to go for a push, you can go for a push, but you must come off of that tip. Don't go for a push cut and come down this way. If you come in here, what's going to happen is this side of the cutter is going to catch this side of the wood and it's going to drag you back that way okay so if you're going to do it you must come round and come off of that tip at all times always working and rolling it over always off the tip of the tool now i'm doing a uh, i'm doing a pull cut i'm coming back this way so i'm getting a lovely clean finish on that and i don't need to go that way Besides that, I've got the camera right, right where my handle wants to be. Right, I think that's going to be enough anyway. That's it. That's all I want to do is get that little bit, little bit hollowed out. All right. Now, once this gets glued back on, it's never ever going to be seen. So there's no need, no need for sanding. But at the same time, it's a good time to practice to practice your cuts and get it nice and smooth. Right, that's enough. That's all I need to do inside that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pull, pull this back round to the front. Well, something to help vibrate, and I'm not sure exactly what it is. Ah, there we go. So I've got a little bit of wood down here and it was vibrating. That's what, where I was getting the noise from. There you go, you find something new every day, don't you? Right, now, I want to part this piece off now. And then I'll be doing my shaping afterwards. So I'm going straight with the part and tool. Now, this is something I do, and I'm not saying you do this, okay? A lot of people part down, get in so far, and then stop your lathe, use a handsaw, whatever. Now, this is why I use my carbide parting tool, and this is one I made up for myself. When using standard parting tools, normal parting tool, you need to make a little relief cut because this is all the same shape so what will happen is that will that so i think i'm in camera here, that will bite up and it will it will bite as you go in so you make a little relief cut okay it's exactly the same if you use a thin parting tool it's the same you're going to need to do a little relief cut 
but with the carbide tool that I use, I have the benefit that I have a three mil tip and a two mil uh ain't not really a bar is it really this this bit's two mil and this bit's three mil so that enables me to do, I don't have to make any release cuts two mil is going keep going keep going keep going I'm very gently now for me to turn in I would say stop there right be beginners stop it stop your lathe get your hand saw and cut through but for me I find it quite safe to go through and there you go it's off now you can't do that with normal parting tools it will bind up on you it'll smoke and it'll become very hard to do you can do it with this tool right I'm going to stop that for a minute right now you're pied off. See now this is going to go back round that way and mount on and then I'm going to do the shaping of this. Now I just want to show you that that's I me mean, you saw we've just done that straight off the carbide tool that's the finish we've got. There's no sanding needed on that at all that is a smooth no sanding okay in fact I'll probably rough that up if I started sanding it. Right but now what I've got to do is get be able to mount this back on here okay so easiest way is going to be to measure which I'm going to do I'm going to come out with this uh, calipers get this uh, get this and out right so that's just there so I can see what I'm going to have to take in, okay, I'm going to put a slight mark on that, I'm not, I'm not exactly going to bother with a mark on there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, right that gives me a rough idea, there, right, so I want it to be a tight fit, so I'm just going to take that down in little bits and then trial and error. Now like I said, this is just the way I do it. There'll be a lot of people do it other ways and I'll search out everything on the uh, on YouTube and see all the different ways. But this is how I'm, I'm doing it. Now I'm going to try it, I'm going to stop the load, and see if it fits. Right. Oh, that's uh, that will that will go on, but I'm just wondering whether there's a chance that's going to. Right. Yeah. I'm going to. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take that down just a tiniest little bit more. Because what's going to happen when I when I come to shape that, that's going to end up cracking a bit too tight. I don't want it to be loose. So. Very gentle. Like that, very gentle. Okay. Now let's see. That's better. Right. That's probably a little bit deeper than what that is, so that, that's that's fine with that. But that's held on. That's not going nowhere. I'm going to bring my. I want my towel stock up. I'm going to use my towel stock to hold it on anyway. What I've got is I've got that little nibble there. So I'm going to turn this on. Hope everything stays on. And I'm just going to come in to turn that little nibble down. I'm rolling the tool over so I don't get no touching. 
So we're going to pop off and we'll put a little dibble in the middle, like that. I think that's got it. Let's go for a little, little dimple. What I also want to do here, if you remember I drilled, because the drill bit weren't quite long enough, I want to come back in here. Gonna keep moving now. Right, oh, that'd be all right. We can go with that. Right, I want to get my tool rest in. That holds it on for me. There you go. Just holding, not not too much. Don't need to be too much. And what I'm gonna do is I'm come in with a round chisel. Quite a good cut anyway, but as long as I leave enough room for my final cut, then it'll be alright. I can clean it up. Oh, we're just going to get the material removed. Now, because remember the way our uh, brain's going, we don't really want to come this way, we want to go that way with our final cut. I'll get to that in a minute and tell you what I'm going to do. Right, now, that's pretty much my shape I want. That's my shape I want. Now you can see there is some tear out there because I'm just using my cutter flat. Right, but it's not bad, but there's a little bit there. Right, now, I want to do my final cut. Now because the end grain is all coming, this, all the grain's going this way. If I roll over and I cut this way, I'm going to be going against all the fibres. They're all coming this way. I'm going to be going against. So I'm not going to get a good a good finish. We want to go this way, okay? Now, like I said, the problem here: if you roll your tool over and you come this way. As soon as you start, because this is up. I mean, you can see one. It wants to skid backwards because of the angle you're at. And two, this top bit is going to catch. All right, it's probably going to break your top or flip it off. Whatever you're going to catch. So to come down, you.